So, for the vlog, for my location, I'm just doing in my parents' room, where there we have a Wamsley 4 for our family, and then money, and then a bench press. And that explains because my theme is basically the will to survive. And so some people's goal in life, their will to survive is to either, you know, live for their family, you know, provide for them and be there for them, or to have success in their life. They want money. Or to just compete. And that's what you do. To, to compete, you got to get stronger. So they either uh, live for their family, live for money, or live to compete. In the novel Night by Elie Wiesel, he shared a story of how he survived one of the largest genocides in history, the Holocaust. And through each and every chapter, he's explained a new story, a new struggle. And with each struggle, he explained, well, not explained, but gave hints of how, what he was like doing to survive. Um, page 85, when he was running to go to a different concentration camp and the Nazis were pushing him there and they ran, it was like 54 miles, I think Mr. Lash said. Um, Ellie was talking, he was saying, I was dragging this emaciated body that was still such a weight, page 85. He was basically talking that his body and not his soul, but his will to survive, there are two different things. So he wouldn't leave his body behind because that's his body was dragging him behind. His will was was to keep going. And he, that's why he wanted to shed off that body in a way. My second quote um, is when he was at the concentration camp with his father and it was one of the first one of the first experiences they had with uh, the SS officers or the gypsy officers all his father did was ask ask to use toilets and that was the first time he saw, seen his uh, father get smacked and Ellie he said that he would have dug his nails into the criminal's flesh page 39 and I believe that in night one of the like biggest most main reasons why he kept going, kept pushing, is because of his father. If his mother and sister were there too, it would have been them too. But his father was there, he was there, he, he always saw him, he was always next to him, and he wanted to survive so he could provide for him, just like Wamsley 4, he wanted to provide for him, live another day, live to see tomorrow, and see him standing next to him. And so when he was smacked, that's why Ellie got such that little a little explosion inside of him. And then my third quote kind of goes on with my last quote, but we'll, we'll get to that later. It was when uh, they were still running to the other concentration camp and Ellie was just out of it. They've been running for at least 50 miles now and everything was hurting. People were still dying off behind him. And he says, the idea of dying ceasing to be begins to fascinate me. And he goes on to say how just not existing, not having that pain in his foot, not having to be hungry. All that just seemed to, to be so great to him. Quote, my father's presence was the only thing that stopped me. Page 86. So it goes back to the other quote saying that his father was his only will to survive. He is literally in love with the idea of death just so like he could get rid of the temporary, temporary pain. And so, he is saying all these things just like, like, dying, like, he could get rid of the pain in his foot, get rid of the hunger. The only thing that's stopping him is to see his dad that next day. He wants to see his dad next to him, he wants to see his dad well, and that's his main will to survive. And my last quote, I really believe that this is one of the biggest reasons why he continued to push on. Like his father was, yes, one of them, but... The indirect quote, like when he was running to the thing, he saw his dad fall and he could, he was kind of still going because he could, he was just trying to go for himself because his dad was already disappointing him. But this is one of the main reasons I feel that he kept pushing on. He wanted to survive to share his stories. After that first night, he made his seven times sealed, those seven sanctuaries he won't forget. Never shall I forget that smoke. Never shall I forget the small faces of the children whose bodies I saw transformed into smoke under a silent sky. 
Never shall I forget those flames that consume my faith forever. Never shall I forget the nocturnal silence that deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget moments that murdered my God and my soul and turned my dreams to ashes. Never shall I forget these things, even were I condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. And this is the first night, and he's already made these. To go on and already experience what he's going through, you already know that he will not forget a thing that happened to him. And to experience what he experienced, he will never let someone go through that again. And he will never let this be a secret. He wants to get it out there. He wants to let people know what happened. Not for, not for publicity, not for fame. He just doesn't want this to happen again to anyone. Because what he went through, unimaginable. And what he went through, like a good person he is, like I said, he doesn't want to do it for publicity, he doesn't want to do it for fame. He also wants to spread the message that he doesn't hate the Nazis. And that's the thing that I'm really shocked about. Because if I went through this, of course I would hate the Nazis. Like, what he did, dehumanized, losing faith, killing his family, I would, I would hate them with all my life. But the thing that Ellie did, he found out that hate was a was the foundation that caused this problem, that causes to him. And so, with the same will to push, push his message and get this out, he pushes the same message of hatred, to not hate. He doesn't believe in it. Because it's the same foundation that led this to the bad experience he had in his life. And that wraps it up.